Hey friends, welcome back to Homemade Homestead. My name is Rachel, if you're new around here. And I'm a mom of three. I love to be cooking up stuff in our kitchen from scratch. We homestead here. So if you have just discovered our channel, we hope you would subscribe. And thank you to all the new subscribers. I noticed that we have like doubled our subscriber count in the last like month and a half. And I wanna thank you guys for subscribing and sticking around with us. So today I'm bringing you one of my favorite recipes, especially when I'm sick. This is a homemade chicken soup. It's gluten-free because we don't use noodles in it. We actually substitute that for potatoes. And most of the ingredients are really frugal and also you could grow yourself. This video is part of a series that I'm making for you guys of taking one chicken, one whole chicken, and turning it into four different things. So tonight we're making chicken soup and I'm gonna also turn this into chicken bone broth, which is just oh so lovely. It's great for your health. Also you could freeze it or can it to save up for recipes later. So that's what we're gonna be making today and then I'm gonna make a part two of this video of two other ways to use the chicken meat off of this one whole chicken. So it's way versatile. It stretches your money so much further. So anyway, enough talking, let's get right into cooking. So the first ingredient we're gonna need is some sort of chicken. I'm going to be using a whole chicken that we raised ourselves that my husband Jesse butchered just this fall. You can see it says October of this year. It's about a five pound chicken. This is gonna be way more chicken than what we need for this recipe. Um, so you could use two chicken breasts. I've done chicken thighs. You just need some kind of chicken that you wanna use. All right, so today I'm going to utilize my Instapot just because I have it and it's kind of like you set it and forget it, which I love and it fits into my life today. So I have definitely used a pot though. And um, the important thing is once I put my chicken in here, I'm gonna go up to the max with water with my chicken in here and it stops you there, even though there's more room in here because of the pressurization, like you know, it needs that space. But I love the broth, so I'm gonna put as much water in here as I possibly can. My chicken is a little thawed out, but yours doesn't have to be thawed. It can be completely frozen. I'm gonna do manual high pressure for about 70 minutes. So while my whole chicken is in the Instant Pot cooking, we are gonna start with our veggies. So right here I have six carrots that I peeled. I have a bunch of potatoes that we peeled and I'm going to cut them up into chunks. I'm also gonna cut these carrots into chunks. So we have our potatoes. It calls for about five to seven potatoes. We do like ours a little bit more potato-y. Also the same with carrots. I am kind of doubling this. Thankfully, none of us are sick in our family right now, but we do have a close friend that told me that they are sick, and so we're gonna bring this meal to them, and it gives me an awesome opportunity to share it with you guys. Maybe putting one in our freezer and then sending one to our friend's house. So I got six carrots here two onions that we're gonna peel and chop, a bunch of parsley, some salt and pepper, and you guys can use regular celery. I'm out of that, but I have dehydrated celery, which works just as well. It's so nice to have this when I don't have regular celery, and when my celery is starting to look a little funky in the fridge, I will dehydrate it if I don't have a use for it right away. So besides our chicken, that's all the ingredients that we need. So I'm going to chop my potatoes, my carrots, and get my onions chopped. I'm gonna do them in big chunks so that they don't just disintegrate in the hot soup. Next, I'm gonna work on my potatoes. I'm not gonna cut them too small either because I don't want them to fall apart. Just about bite-sized pieces. Next, I'm gonna work on my onions. The fun thing is this recipe is almost all solely from the garden. These onions came from our garden, potatoes, the chicken. We have carrots growing outside. These are store-bought carrots, but we do have some carrots out in the garden right now. Now this next step is totally optional. You can use your onions just like this, but I'm going to saute them in some butter until they're nice and caramelized. It just deepens the flavor of the soup. So here are my beautiful caramelized onions. Oh, they just add a depth of flavor. They're so delicious. If you've never tried these on a burger or even a salad, oh, I recommend it. It's just so lovely. 
All right, so all my veggies are ready and prepped. So I've got a bunch of potatoes. The carrots are under here. There's the caramelized onions. Some extra potatoes wouldn't fit on my plate. All the celery. So if you have regular celery, you're gonna want it chopped and ready to go. Some parsley, the salt and pepper. So I'm gonna just wait for my chicken to come to finish its time here. I'm going to do a quick release and we'll be ready to throw everything in together. I will leave a full recipe at the end of this video in case there's something that you miss or um, do you just wanna copy it or screenshot that. So everything will be laid out at the very end of this video. All right, so my chicken is done. I did a quick release on it. Okay, I'm gonna pull out my chicken and I'm gonna put it right here in my bowl. It might fall apart, just to warn you guys, because it is just yep, so tender. Because I am doubling this and I wanna make sure I have a lot of broth, I'm gonna take out my broth right now and I'm gonna strain it over another pot. In case I have little bones or something in there, I don't want that to be in my soup. But if you're doing this with chicken breasts, or even chicken thighs, you know, you're gonna have a lot fewer bones and you don't have to do this step. But I really don't want any bones in my food. So you can see there were some things just in the bottom. I'm gonna set this aside and let it cool down a little bit and then we're going to pull all the meat off of these bones. My husband's actually being really sweet and he wants to do that part of it for me, so I'm not gonna say no to that more help in the kitchen. So now to my empty Instant Pot, I'm gonna add in all my veggies, my potatoes, my carrots, oh boy. Oh, not too bad. I thought it was gonna fly all over the floor. I lost a couple potatoes. I'm gonna throw in all of those caramelized onions. I'm gonna add in probably about Three. Let's do three handfuls of my dried celery or about one cup of fresh celery. Then I'm going to add in about two handfuls of dried parsley. We're going to add in a good amount of salt. Just chop it out. Because that chicken had no seasoning on it. Because I didn't want any seasoning since I'm going to be making many different dishes with it. All right, so I have my Instant Pot just in my sink here, and we're gonna top it again to that two-thirds max line with water. Okay, that looks perfect. I'm just giving it a stir so all that parsley will kind of get saturated with some water and not just stay on the top. So we are gonna pressurize this again. We're gonna put it on sealing. We're gonna go manual. And I'm gonna do 15 minutes on high pressure. All right, so if you weren't using your Instant Pot and just doing a pot right here on the stove, you would have your chicken in its broth. You could pull out that chicken and shred it. And then you're gonna add in your carrots and your spices and let those cook while you're cutting up your potatoes. So probably about five to 10 minutes extra. Those carrots take a little bit longer than the potatoes. But because I didn't wanna add the carrots, go up to pressure, let it cook for like five minutes, come back down, all that stuff, I just wanted to kinda of throw it in and be done. Um, this way it's a little bit different. So add the carrots in, let it go for about five to 10 minutes, then add your potatoes in, you can add your chicken back in, and it'll be done when those carrots and potatoes are nice and tender. All right, we finished picking that chicken. So we have about yeah. 10. <laughs> we have about 10 cups of chicken here. So in this yeah. recipe, I'm gonna use about four cups and then I'm gonna save the other six cups for my other video that you guys will see soon. And this will be used for two different dinner recipes. So on my stove, I took my chicken broth and divided it in half. And I'm gonna take my chicken and divide it again. Now this is because I'm doubling it. But again, if you're just making a single portion, could use about two cups of chicken or if you like it really chickeny you could definitely add the four cups of chicken it's kind of your preference so now we've got the chicken broth and the, the chicken in there so I just did a quick release now my pin is down Ooh, so beautiful
And it smells so yummy with all that parsley. You can see everything is so nice and soft. That 15 minutes was perfect. It didn't make all those potatoes just completely fall apart, but everything is nice and tender. So if I was doing a single portion right here in my Instant Pot, I would just add back in my chicken and my chicken broth, taste for salt and pepper, and there you go, your soup is done. But because I did do a double batch, I'm going to divide this into two pots, and we're gonna go deliver this one to a friend, and then we're going to eat on this other one for dinner. I bet you it's gonna be enough to make a freezer meal out of, and that's my favorite way to do freezer meals, is just freeze our leftovers. So we'll eat what we can for dinner tonight, and then I'll just put it in a gallon size bag, stick it in my freezer for another day. All right, so now I have my chicken bones here in this crock pot, like the inner pot. I'm gonna to top this off with some water. And we are gonna let this go in our crock pot on low for at least 48 hours. Some people like to go for a day. I like to go to the two day mark and it makes a really nice rich broth. And once it's done, you guys can either freeze it or you can can it in your pressure canners. Not the Instant Pot, but like an actual pressure canner to make it shelf stable. Um, this is awesome to have for other soups, just to drink. Some people like to drink bone broth but it's a great healing thing to have and it'll save you money as well. And it's been a few days and this is the beautiful bone broth that we made. Can't wait to use this in soups, stews, or even just drink it how it is. All right, well that does it for today, you guys. So here we have this hearty, delicious, uh, soothing soup. Mm. It's perfect on a cold day, or if you feel like you're coming down with something, that's when I love to have it. And then we also have that wonderful chicken bone broth that I can't wait to turn into so many different recipes. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today in my kitchen. I hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are, and um, we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye now.